Hey guys, what's up? This is Blaze the Movie Fan and it's time for another spoiler movie review. This time I will be talking about Spider-Man 3 in full detail. Now before I begin, there's something that I would like to point out. This movie is considered by many to be the worst Spider-Man movie of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. But is it really a bad movie? In my opinion, no, it isn't. It isn't anywhere near bad. If you wanna see a superhero movie that's truly fucking awful, I think Batman and Robin and Superman 4 Quest for Peace fit the definition of awful way more. And I also don't agree with some of the issues that people have with the movie Spider-Man 3. So in this video I will kinda be defending this movie. Anyway, with that being said, let's start talking about the movie Spider-Man 3. So the movie basically begins with Spider-Man and Peter Parker being very fucking happy and thankful for his life. Yeah, everything is going great for him. Peter Parker is surrounded by fucking fans. He finally manages to win great relationship with Mary Jane. And yeah, everything is overall going so fucking well with him. He buys Mary Jane a wedding ring and is about to get married to her. And you know what? Spider-Man really has improved as a person. Remember in my spoiler review of Spider-Man 2 when I said he was too fucking obsessed with stopping crimes? Well, here he is not that obsessed. In this movie he knows that there is time and place to stop crimes and he doesn't do it all the fucking time. He also spends time with his girlfriend. Let me tell you, Peter Parker sure as hell deserves the great life that he is having by the beginning of this movie. And then we are introduced to one of the main villains of the movie, Flint Marco, who is apparently some guy who is trying to escape from the cops. Now he hides to see his daughter, but his wife does not want to see that guy. What exactly is he wanted for? It isn't very well explained in that scene, but thankfully though it is explained better later on in the movie. But yeah, I'm pretty sure there is a damn good reason why so many cops are after him. Now he tells his wife that he is not a bad person but just has bad luck. Yeah, I think that's a whole bunch of bullshit. There must be a good reason why so many police officers are after him. There has to be. But anyway, this guy keeps running and finally gets somewhere surrounded by sand and some machine stuff. And that machine would have killed him if this was real life. But nope, instead it is there to build up the villain. This is a common trend in Spider-Man movies. The people who become the villains get into situations that would normally kill them, but for some reason it gives them superpowers. Maybe some people might find those scenes to be stupid, but I personally think those scenes are fucking awesome. But anyway, yeah, shortly after that he becomes Sandman. Anyway, back to the main plot. Spider-Man saves a woman from a building who happens to be hit by a fucking crane. Why the hell is that crane destroying the building anyway? I don't know, it isn't really explained, but whatever. Spider-Man saves Gwen Stacy from that building. Like I said, Spider-Man deserves all the praise that he's getting. But anyway, shortly after, Harry starts attacking Spider-Man. The reason why he's attacking Spider-Man is because he wants to avenge the death of his father. And I gotta admit, I do think his reasons 
for wanting to kill Spider-Man make sense. Now Spider-Man tries to explain that he isn't the one who killed his father. But of course Harry doesn't listen and tries to kill Peter Parker regardless. I don't blame him. If my father was killed, I would avenge his death as well. If I was like that, I mean. But I personally don't believe in revenge, so I wouldn't do that. But I still understand why he felt that way though. Now while Peter Parker is being attacked by Harry, he almost loses his wedding ring. And Peter Parker swings across outside his Spider-Man suit. Which isn't a very good idea since anybody can see him. But due to Peter Parker's incredible luck, nobody outside of Harry who already knew notices that. But after Harry attacks Peter Parker for such a long time, he finally gets hurt badly. Now Peter Parker is still a good person, and even though Harry was trying to fucking kill him, he wants to get him to a hospital regardless. And how convenient, Harry loses his memory. So at the hospital where Peter Parker meets him, he doesn't remember a goddamn thing. But anyway, the whole city is fucking celebrating Spider-Man as he is such a great hero. Well, everybody except that shitty newspaper owner, J. Jonah Jameson. Is he really that fucking dance? Apparently, other newspapers of the city are doing better than the Daily Bogle. And I just gotta say, why the hell do you think that is? J. Jonah Jameson, it's simple. Because you are still trying to make Spider-Man look like the bad guy, even though it's plainly fucking obvious that he's not. To be honest, I do think that the Daily Bugle deserves to fucking fail and run out of business. Especially with that fucking moron who runs that newspaper. But anyway, back to Spider-Man. He does something unthinkable. He kisses one of his fans. Now of course, when Mary Jane notices that, she is in fucking shock, and rightfully so. Later on, Peter Parker spends a lot of fucking money to have the perfect dinner with Mary Jane. But unfortunately for Peter Parker, she is still in fucking shock. And Peter Parker spent so much fucking money and made a very special request to the people who work here to make sure that would be the perfect dinner. Now, Peter Parker tries to justify why he kissed that other woman by saying that she was just a friend, but Mary Jane is still in shock. I'm sorry, Peter Parker, but it is your fault that she was in shock. It's not really a good idea to kiss someone in public if you have a girlfriend like you did. But anyway, I finally get to see Sandman in action. Sandman starts attacking and causes some fucking huge sandstorms. So Sandman warns Spider-Man to stay away. But he doesn't do it and decides to attack Sandman regardless. But Peter Parker realizes that he doesn't stand a motherfucking chance. So yeah, Spider-Man couldn't really stop Sandman here. But anyway, at home, Peter Parker does feel bad about what happened to Mary Jane. So he decides to call her and explain himself. Now, here's something that I have to point out, and that's the phone that Peter Parker is using, not just in this scene, but every time he makes a call. Peter Parker is using a payphone. I'm sorry, but I have a big issue with that. The reason why I have an issue with that is because this movie was made in 2007, and at the top of that, it's also supposed to take place in that year. I can clearly see that movie looks modern. So why the fuck does Peter Parker use a, a payphone? That would fit if that movie was supposed to take place in the 1980s or earlier, but he should have a fucking cell phone. 
Everyone nowadays has a fucking cell phone and it was also all that way back in 2007. I'm sorry, I just can't get over this. I mean, come on, if you was able to afford such a fancy restaurant, then why the fuck can't he afford to own a cell phone? Anyway, we get to know more about the villain. Apparently, Sandman or Flint Marco is the guy who killed Uncle Ben. So you know what Peter Parker does? He wants to avenge his father. Now he lays in his bed for a bit in his Spider-Man costume. But some evil black goo attaches itself to the Spider-Man costume and that black goo makes the Spider-Man costume darker. Which is why I'm going to call that new Spider-Man costume Dark Spider-Man costume. But anyway, he feels good in that Dark Spider-Man costume. Now Spider-Man decides that he wants to have his revenge on Sandman. And I must admit, that scene where he attacks Sandman is fucking awesome. So yeah, he does decide to fucking kill Sandman. And there is only one way to do it. And that's to throw him in a water. Because obviously sand is weak to water. Yeah, Spider-Man does kill Sandman and feels good about it. But his aunt is not happy about that at all. In fact, she is shocked since that's not like Spider-Man. Now Peter Parker tries to tell his aunt that the guy deserved to die. But yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you aunt. Killing a killer does not make one any less of a killer. In fact, Spider-Man is just as bad as Flint Marco was. But anyway, the next day at the Daily Burger, Eddie Brock got a great picture of Spider-Man acting like a criminal. But of course, Peter Parker cares about his reputation and knows what Eddie Brock did will damage his reputation a lot. So you know what Peter Parker does? He fucking blackmails him by convincing other people who work there that the photo is fake even though it's not really fake. Blackmailing someone because of this is fucking extreme. But I understand that Peter Parker had to do it. But Harry gets his memory back and talks to his father in the mirror. Now in the first Spider-Man movie, the fact that Harry's father was talking to himself in the mirror and was hearing voices, I thought that was very fucking stupid. But in this movie, it's actually a lot more logical. Because Harry feels bad about the death of his father and wants to avenge him. Now, Harry wants to do more than just kill Spider-Man. Harry also decides to break Peter's heart by making Mary Jane tell Peter Parker that it's over between them. And yeah, it is very sad that she tells Peter Parker that she doesn't want to see him again. But anyway, it's totally understandable. But soon comes that infamous scene also known as Emo Peter and you know what I am totally willing to defend that scene. People have an issue with that scene because it comes out of nowhere and it doesn't feel like it's from a Spider-Man movie. Well out of context it might be but here Peter Parker is just trying to impress his new girlfriend Gwen Stacy. That doesn't go well for him unfortunately, but he still does his best to impress her. And I do think that's fucking awesome. Honestly, if you were to ask me what scene of the trilogy is an absolutely dumb scene, I would say that that train scene in the second Spider-Man movie is way dumber than that scene. Because in that train scene in the second Spider-Man movie, the passengers were acting fucking stupid. But here, Peter Parker is at least trying to do something right by dancing for her. But anyway, since Gwen Stacy thinks that Peter Parker is doing it for his old girlfriend, that relationship also ends pretty quickly. But later on, Spider-Man goes to a church with a dark Spider-Man costume. But he tries to take that costume off 
but it seems to be fucking stuck on him. He's at the floor with the bell, but right down there is that newspaper guy. Eddie Brock, who is still angry about being blackmailed. But that black girl gets on him and he becomes Venom. Also, as it turns out, Sandman is still alive. That water didn't kill him. So what the hell can kill Sandman then? Is he fucking indestructible? I have no idea how the hell Sandman survived that. But whatever. Venom which is the name of Addy Brock after he gets his power and Sandman decide to work together to finally destroy Spider-Man. Yeah, Mary Jane is stuck in a taxi high, high up. Now Peter Parker asks for Harry's help since he can't beat those two fucking psychopaths alone. But Harry refuses to help him as he still thinks that Spider-Man is the one who killed his father. Unfortunately, Peter Parker doesn't manage to convince Harry otherwise, but the butler does manage to convince Harry that it wasn't Spider-Man's fault that his father died. So after a huge epic fucking battle between Spider-Man and Sandman as well as Venom, Spider-Man almost gets killed, but Harry comes and fights those two old dangerous villains. And in the crowd there is one guy who wants a photo of Spider-Man. And that is none other than J. Jonah Jameson. And I'm just like, why the fuck do you want a photo of Spider-Man fighting those two psychopaths? I mean it doesn't make sense because clearly this guy only wants some photos proving that Spider-Man is a criminal which he won't get there so it makes no sense but yeah Venom tells Spider-Man that he is still angry about him ruining his career but it wasn't easy but Spider-Man along with Harry managed to eventually kill Venom. Now after that huge epic battle is over, Flint Marco tries to explain exactly why he killed Peter Parker's uncle Ben. And I'm sorry but I'm not buying any of what he is saying. Nothing he says really excuses the fact that he killed Uncle Ben in the first place. It doesn't at all. It's still a fucking horrible thing to do and there is no excuse for it. So yeah, I don't sympathize to the Sandman at all. But I still think that he is a fucking awesome villain in this movie. But anyway, after that is done, the movie ends shortly after that. Now it's time for my overall thoughts. Personally, I don't think that this is the weakest movie of the series. Yeah, it has some dumb moments, but so do the other two Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. I do think that this movie is fucking awesome. It has a great story, great villains, and just everything that you would expect from the other two Spider-Man movies as well. It is very fucking enjoyable, and for that I'm going to give this movie two thumbs up. I honestly can't tell you which one is the best and which one is the weakest of the series. I think all three Spider-Man movies are fucking awesome. Now, I might cover the newer Spider-Man movies at some point and talking about them in full detail. I don't have any plans on doing that currently, but I might do that somewhere in the future. It sure has been a lot of fun talking about Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. And I will keep watching these movies as I do think that they are fucking awesome. Well guys, that's all I gotta say. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.